How do you shut down an entire city? Simple. Pull the plug. August 14th, 2003. A small power surge in Ohio overwhelms the nation's power grid. A blackout sweeps across the East Coast. For nearly 24 hours, America's biggest city is powerless. The blackout was terrible. We lost everything in this island. A whole New York City went down. There was no power. It was the w one of the worst days of my life. I was stuck on the train. I'll never forget that. Gristiti's mega market on Roosevelt Island was devastated. We were not able to save any of the perishable foods. We, we lost thousands of dollars in meats, milks, just about everything that's perishable went down. It was a disaster. The more power we use, especially in the summer, the more likely we are to have a blackout. The Big Apple guzzles power. Every day, New York City consumes more energy than many African countries. Now Gristiti's, the landmark of homemade food, will become a guinea pig in an electrifying experiment, creating homemade power. Maybe it's a stage or age of my life and the experiences that I've had that got me to the point where I wanted to do some good with my life. A sense of self-worth, making a contribution. And we feel like what's going on here today is a start at doing something profoundly different that'll have a profound goodness for the rest of the planet. Trey Taylor plans to give New York a new kind of energy. Safe, clean, limitless. His energy source literally surrounds Manhattan. The water flows around New York City are much like an untapped battery source of power because it's not only this East River that we're crossing over right now, but it's also the Hudson River. So all of Manhattan, New York, its five boroughs are surrounded by moving water, tides and rivers. And that's a tremendous amount of power to be tapped. Trey has spent seven years developing the technology to harness that power. Each turbine will generate 35 kilowatts, enough to power 20 households for a year. The system is an underwater wind turbine using the tidal currents to generate electricity. Now that hasn't been done before. With these first two turbines and the four to follow, it'll be the first field of underwater wind turbines producing electricity, and if we keep this up, we could make New York City the world's largest renewable energy city. Trey's turbines are about to debut off Roosevelt Island. It's a partnership between the state of New York and private investors. The first to benefit will be Gristides, just 10 feet from the river's edge. They're the first takers of this power. It is going to work here. And then from New York, the rest of the United States, Canada, the UK, and then off we go into the developing countries. They begin by anchoring a barge that can lower legs into the river and jack itself up. A safe platform to work on. They'll need it. Dutch sailors named this channel Hell's Gate. Every six hours, the gravitational pull of the moon forces tides to rage through the East River. 
For Trey, it's both a blessing and a curse. These currents are moving at about uh, four knots, and that's about the speed of sailboat goes. Now, if people have never been in the water, uh, that's the kind of stuff that'll just knock you over. Uh, that's really very fast water. But for us, that's good. That's a lot of energy in that kind of water. Two divers will bolt the turbines onto their foundations on the riverbed. It's only safe to dive between the tides when the water is briefly calm. Their window, less than an hour. Diving is dangerous, especially with this dive, because this dive, I've got like 45 minutes to get in the water, do my thing and get out, so I don't have any time. And the current here is really bad because of all the sediment that picks up and you can't see very far because it's black at the bottom, it's pitch black. The race against the clock begins. If the divers don't finish in time, they could be swept away, turbines and all. Fifteen feet underwater, the visibility is an arm's length. And on the bottom. It's so dark below, the divers need a compass to guide the turbines into place. Yeah, two pulses, about 245. Roger. Five. Two, four, five. Two, four, five. Yeah. All stop. All stop. With more than four tons of steel overhead, it's a touchy moment for everyone. Swing it back and touch. Swing back to the left and touch. Roger. Roger that. There are risks. If they release it and this thing yaws or the current's picked up enough, it could spin and it could hit the diver, hurt the diver. Just a touch, just a touch down, Roger. All stop. Nice. The number one turbine is in place. Beautiful, Ben. The tide changes and the current picks up speed. It's working. Inside the turbine, a wire spins within a magnetic field. Electrons inside the wire pulse back and forth. We got power? We do. We have power. And without interruption, it feeds electricity to Gristiti's supermarket. Congratulations, everybody. The store is now powered by the tide. I understand that the tides create the power. Unless the moon falls off the sky, we're gonna have power. That's a very important aspect for this door. It's revolutionary. This is the future. This calls for a celebratory toast. Yay! Trey has worked seven years for this moment. We've been working for a long time to get to this point. And it's like a sense of relief. We made it, we're here now. And everything else from this point forward will just keep getting better. Eventually, Trey hopes to provide a tenth of all of New York's power from the tides. Maybe more. If we can begin to harness moving water, which is abundant, I mean, two thirds of the planet's covered by water, that gives me such an exciting feeling. That's really where I draw my passion from that. And if you think for a moment of the current in the Gulf Stream, there's enough power out there to create more electricity than the entire United States is making right now could happen in the Gulf Stream. Tidal turbines are driven by the pull of the moon, but why stop there? Why not reach for the stars?